Hello, you guys. I'm back. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to do episode two of Femme Fatale, the female assassin. Stone Cold. Though I haven't quite, you know. Okay, I'm about to, I'm trying to get into this girl. I'm trying. <laughs> As I entered the bar, a thick wall of cigarette smoke hit me like a slamming door to the face. Mr. Smith, a skinny blonde man, probably in his late 20s, looked confused at me. Ah, uh, femme fatale. Oh, okay, okay. Like I expected on the phone yesterday, he's also British. Wow, you <laughs> look nothing like I expected. What did you expect? A girl in a cat suit and a mask? <laughs> I apologize, you just look very normal. Well, that's kind of the point. Of course, of course. What do you drink, Miss Face Out? Nothing. Now, can we get to the job? You certainly are professional, but no. We're waiting on someone else to arrive. Someone else? To be as professional as possible, I work alone. No distractions. No one else but me to take care of it. That's how I work. I could feel the aggravation building up inside of me as he said that. Yes, we both. No, <laughs> yes. Oh, we need both a male and female spot for this job. Someone must have forgotten to tell you that I work alone, sir. You'll be working alone. You'll do your job and he'll do his. <laughs> the only times you will see each other are when you will update me. On the whole situation. <sighs> Note. <clears throat> when making a choice in the story. Remember the choice you make. Will affect what people think of you. So choose wisely. Uh, I don't like this. I don't like the sound of this. Why didn't you inform me about this. On the phone last night. I have enemies you know. If you want me to be professional about this job, then you better be professional as well. I don't work with amateurs, and I certainly don't put my life at risk for some rookie. Daniel thinks you're professional, but maybe overreacted a bit. I don't give a shit. <laughs> of course, I apologize, but don't worry. He's not a rookie. His reputation is as good as yours. I seriously doubt that, girl. Ah, there he is. Great. Is he cute? Oh yeah. Raven, it's good to see you again. Hey. <laughs> good to see you too, Daniel. Young man, honey. Young man. Dressed in a black leather jacket, walked in and looked around. He was spit, had messy blonde hair and dark brown eyes. I guess you could say he was good looking. I, I can. Yeah, I can. <laughs> okay, very good looking. I could feel my heart rate increasing as he made eye contact with me. Oh, yes. Definitely a raven. You guys have met each other before? Raven has worked with, with us a few times in the past. Ah, Fem Fem Fatel, it's an honor to meet you. Dang said we would be working together. Yeah. It's nice to meet you too. Uh, Raven? It's my um, alias. So, well, basically, a raven is a, is a male version of, of the femme fatale. I know what it means. <laughs> of course you do. I, just, I was just mentioning in, oh, in case Daniel was unsure of what I meant, what it meant. A serious flirt to okay, whatever. How noble of you. <laughs> anyway, let's go somewhere more private where we can talk details. Follow me. Liam. Why is he looks like Liam? Him. Daniel. The Daniel kid. Sorry about the location. I should have shown you the headquarters of our operation, but we're a bit busy at the moment, so I hope this will do. 
okay, I've given you the case files. You may take take a look at them. Who that? Tristan Evergreen, honey. Mm. As I saw his face on the picture, I remembered seeing his, this hero on television last night. We've been hearing quite a bit about him lately in the media. <laughs> the media's. <laughs> Tristan Evergreen is is the name. This is his name. You have probably heard about him before, before, he, as he is becoming quite famous for his new revolutionary idea, quote unquote. Um, he is also quite a ladies' fan, handsome, rich, and smart. So why is he our mission? We have suspected that this revolutionary idea of his is not as magnificent as he described it to be. Our sources have suspected that he is not making a serum that will help the world. No. On the contrary. He's making a biochemical weapon concealed as a world saving serum. He's luring sponsors into his trap, selling them an idea of saving the world. According to this, or yeah. according to our, hey, according to our informers, he's selling these sponsors <laughs> with uh, the serum. It's a plastic dissolving uh. serum that can remove all plastic from the ocean without any side effects. We need you, Miss Fatal, to pose as a potential investor, get to know him, and get us that serum or what or else it will have fatal consequences for all. Oh, wait, go back. Fatal consequences. Wait, what the fuck? Hold on. Oh, for all of mankind. <sighs> we think that he'll sell this biochemical weapon to the highest bidder when he when it's finished, and who knows what it can do in, in the wrong hands. But, it's not as easy as it seems. He doesn't let people inside his lab. He only has a few trusted people in there working on the serum. You will need to get to know him. I mean, really get to know him. Get him to trust you so that he lets you into his lab. Or let you close enough to get there by yourself when he's occupied. And Raven. <laughs> You will be her ears and eyes outside the walls. You will mainly provide her with information about him and his work throughout his uh, a mini earpiece. What? No, I've already made it clear that I work alone. I don't need his help. Oh, come on, gorgeous. <laughs> we'll make a great team. Besides, you don't want to. Say, you don't want to save the world. He whispered teasingly in my ear, sending a shiver down my spine. I'll break your pretty little nose. Technically, you won't be working with him. He won't be around you, only in your ear. <laughs> we need you, both of you. <laughs> You're the best in the business. I felt torn. I had sworn to never work together with another assassin. I know they can't be trusted. I know because some people will do anything for money, even if it means taking out an entire family. Oh, which will be your family, right, girl? Mama, Papa, I'm... What the... Right, what the... What the hell it calls? Mama, Papa... A, what? Chris... Chris... Christian... Christian, no? Alex? The hell? What type of fucking name? Oh, shit. Damn. I mean, goddamn, it's a lot of blood for four people. Somebody Shit. Right, blood. Blood everywhere. I found Mama, her brother, well, her twin brothers, right? Laying on the floor in the big pools of blood. Police found Papa behind the kitchen counter. They'd all been shot multiple times. What happened to my family got known as a, a, a girl, the the Venice Massacre, okay? Shit, because, you know, she's still, she's not speaking any other language, I don't think. Um, seeing them lay there was a nightmare. Oh, 
was what nightmares are made of. But it was real. Real as an organ. Why organ? Why? Um, it got, it, I, well, yeah, it got admitted into the Department of Children's Psychiatric for two years. I got, bitch. Having constant nightmares and severe depression. However, it could, it didn't take the police long after the murder to figure out what happened. A man named, I'm going to call him Silverado, y'all. Silverado, the beach house, okay? The owner of the vineyard next to ours have been waiting, wanting to buy our vineyard for years. Papa refused, even though running the vineyard was hard work and years harvest had been bad. He wanted the vineyard to pass down to me or my brother someday. Angry with Papa, uh... Angry with Papa's decision, he hired an assassin to murder my entire family, hoping to get the vineyard afterwards. The assassin probably panicked. When he couldn't find me, he took off. That's why I left. The police quickly figured it out since Silverado was the only man holding a grudge to Papa and my family. He confessed and now was serving a life in prison. But the assassin was never found. Wouldn't it be crazy? Okay. I was uh sent into I was sent into foster care, sent into foster care, and people I didn't know started sending me money and kids as my story spread out through the country. I exchange, or in exchange, I would send them a letter thanking them for the gifts and for contributing to my hopefully brighter future. He. But I couldn't stay with another family. It was too painful. My, my foster family was nice and very careful. With me because they know they well they knew how fragile I was, but they could never re ever replace my family. I I so happily lived with my all my life, trying to be the sweet girl I used to be suffocated me. I was so angry with the world, so I decided to pack up my clothes, some food, and try my luck out there on my own. I wasn't scared after all I had seen. Nothing scared me anymore. I had nothing to lose. Um, my tummy hurts. I lived on the streets of Venice for about a year, stealing food, money from people to get by. At least that was what I did until I tried to steal from the wrong kind of people. From them. They were members of the Malade uh, Ben Ben or, yeah Benta I think Brenta. Anyway, also known as um the sh look the fucking mafia. Of course, I didn't know that by then. With lightning reflexes, the guy on the left grabbed my hand as I tried to sneak out of his wallet. Apparently, they like my guts and also my looks. They saw huge potential in me. <laughs> a pretty girl like you shouldn't be dressed in rags or living in the streets like a rat, they said. You should be live you should live in luxury, adored and desired by many men. What they said caught my attention and well, I must admit, at the time I missed a bed, a real bed, they took me in, gave me a rip up of my head and fed me. Then taught me everything about this side of life and organized crime. Taught me how to fight, to steal, gamble, to kill. But most of all, they taught me how to be femme fatale. Hey, turn up. You better be, you know, killing motherfuckers around here. Shit. I came to live with a woman named, um, Christi Chris Christiel. Christiel? And her husband who called, who they called... Um, Morello or boss. He was one of the big guys and I didn't see him often. 
these are two guys that found me, Hector and Carl. Um, the Morello's guys, the scars, and they lived here in this huge mansion. So things were good between us. They were really nice to me, but I knew that. I knew what they did for a living, so I kept my distance emotionally. I never told them my story either. When I turned 18, I had seen my share of murders, robberies, and drug dealings. And with years of training, I was now ready to debut as Finn Hey, turn up. I love this dress, especially in blue, baby. Mm. <laughs> Not the whistle. Other, the others cheered as they approved their work. We all froze when Mar uh, when Morello entered to see what all the commotion was about. He stood there looking at me, squinting his eyes. I just stood there awkwardly hoping he would approve or also approve of my transformation. Please like it, please. Hmm. And with a light nod and light applause, he did. Y'all, he looked like he could be Detroit's daddy, y'all. <laughs> I felt honored. I was ready. I felt stronger than ever. And for the first time in a really long time, I felt safe. Even though I had seen enough messed up things in my life, I didn't see how messed up joining this mob was. Shit. I was actually pretty happy about being Femme Fatale and being with the mob. Right until I got the job that made me turn my back on them and never look back. My job was to seduce another mafia boss to get close to him. They wanted me to kidnap his son and kill him. The last part I wasn't aware of and it haunts me to this day. I know I couldn't do it. I know it. But in, in the Mafia, it's kill or be killed. I knew that no matter what, the boy would die. I just couldn't be the one pulling the trigger. When I looked at the kid, I saw my brothers. I visualized how they got shot the same way this little boy was about to be. I felt my heart was breaking inside of me. Once again, I was desperately gasping um, around and trying to keep the pieces together. I I can't do it, Morello. Gunshot. As the door closed behind me, I ran down the hall, but when I heard the gun go off, I knew someone else had been just finished a job and I couldn't save him. Just like I couldn't save my brothers. It made my stomach twist into what felt like thousands of knots. A thousand, a thousand knots. Um, I felt, I felt sick. I had to get away from there. They didn't run after me. I guess they thought I just needed some air. I guess they never expected me to take off. They trusted me. I jumped on a plane to New York and decided to make a living of what I learned from the Mafia. After all, I was good at it. However, they don't ex exactly appreciate you turning your back on them. So I went underground for a while before starting my business. I have two rules I live by. And those are, one, to never kill a child, and two, to follow my heart. I don't take jobs that are as cruel as the ones my family went through. I could never do that. I must admit, though, I would love to find the, the assassin that killed my family and put him through the pain my family and I experienced. Someday, someday justice will be served. All this whole flashback and all this shit. 
Woohoo, Mr. Tell. Oh, I, I, sorry. Anyway, I'll call you in a few days to give you further instructions. Okie dokie. Hey, are you okay? You look like you've seen the ghost. I'm Lucas, by the way. You can call me that if you want. Just walk away. Hey, hey, wait. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just... It sounds crazy, but I feel like we have a connection. Lucas thinks you're mysterious. A what? We don't have a connection, and we will never will have a connection. We just met, for Christ's sakes. What? Can't you feel it? We're so alike. <laughs> We're both top spies and the best in the business. We're like Brad and Angelina and Mr. and Mrs. Smith. <laughs> you're crazy. Stay away from me. <laughs> no, you're right. I'm sorry about that. I don't know your story and you don't know mine. But I can imagine your story is probably uh, as messed up. I'm trying to be... Wait, I'm just trying to be friendly. Well, I don't do friendly. No. I kind of get the feeling... That I can't get that fella. Um, I do my job. That's it. So you're going to do <laughs> Tristan Evergreen? You are such a raven. It's not working on me. Um, what what is not working on you? My charms. I've never been with with the femme fatale, but I can imagine you're as good at, at charming men as I'm at charming women. I must admit, the thought is exciting. <laughs> I have met my share of ravens. This one is no different. A raven is like a femme fatale, trained to be irresistible as can be. M most of the time, they are too. But unlike me, they find it hard to take this seductive mask off. Again, once they learned how to apply it. I don't think that surprises anyone when thinking about how men are real in general. Anyway, wait, wait, go back, bitch. I wasn't finished fucking reading that. Anyway, I know when it's not appropriate to use... Wait, I know when it's not appropriate to use the mask. He clearly doesn't. I must be careful with him, though. He's probably the best one there is. And even though I think I never experienced loving him, well, I still need have needs. <laughs> physical needs <laughs> you need to wake up we're professional besides you're wasting your time I don't think I am but fine I'm looking forward to working with you okay good talk he's cute well, I got some physical needs too and I need you to be banging him <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> when I got home, I was mentally exhausted. These past few days have been draining me from all those flashbacks. Right, should you drain me too, girl? Shit. Media Lucas also made quite an impression. It's been a while since someone tried to make friends with me. Or, or and tried to hook up with me too. Hooking up is it's, it's easy, but I'm not sure I even know how to be a friend to someone. But the whole getting involved with someone... Even if it's just as a friend, it's not something I could do again. <sighs> when the pain of losing your family almost destroys you, at least leaving you broken and scarred for life, you don't. Okay. You don't go seeking for a risk of experiencing that again. We don't get to choose some juice. Maybe I'm a coward. Sure. I can take down five armed men in, in one minute. But isn't the whole being strong thing about learning to love again after you've been hurt? Mm, is it really, girl? <laughs> Maybe I should explore the possibilities. Who knows? Maybe something um, good. Ugh. Something good in my life uh, could help me forget but all the bad things. Cut it really though, girl. Anyway. <laughs> it has uh, to wait after this mission. I need to put on my Finn Patel mask and let nothing distract me from winning Tristan's Evergreen's heart.
Now, why, why would you do that, sir? Well, what are you going through? I like to think of myself as a super secret, super, wait, secret superhero. <laughs> I've never been taking a job where I thought I was doing something really wrong. I always do my background checks on a person before I assassinate him. The people I have killed have been murderers, rapers, gang members. Or a pedophile. Not that it justifies uh, killing them, but at least they weren't innocent. Right. Uh, I would never take a job as an assassin that killed my family. Uh, I would never take a work. A job at oh as the assassin that killed my family. I'm like what the fuck are you talking about girl? Um so just for the money. I actually hope to get rid of people like him. I like to think that with this next mission I might help save the world so but for now I just need some sleep. Dallas, you really doing a lot, aren't you? Sir Cookie. Okay. I think, uh, oh, my bad. And that is that. You guys, I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to do a couple more of these. I, I'm trying to see where this is going exactly.